The future of fuel in transport is a big question. One answer to this could be hydrogen. And to demonstrate its viability, INEOS teamed up with Right Bus and Rise for a bus tour that took them across the UK, visiting businesses working with hydrogen, all the way to Glasgow for COP26. The ambition for the tour is really to showcase that hydrogen can play a major role in decarbonising our economy. Partnering with Rightbus has been the right thing for us to do here. We can provide the hydrogen, Rightbus can provide the engine that can consume it, and together we can then show that this is a very viable option for heavy-duty transport like buses. This is our first double-deck hydrogen bus released to the UK market last year. We've got two main customers already operating it. One is in Aberdeen and the other one is Metroline in, in London. If you look at car industry, mainly have already gone towards electric, but the bigger, the heavier use, uh, you actually find that there needs a lot more energy and therefore batteries just don't do the job for the more arduous journeys. So the longer bus routes, the um, transport around moving goods and, and food around the country, you'll see more towards hydrogen. We have over 100 buses on the roads in the UK today. We hope to do more. There's 45,000 buses in the UK and it would be great to decarbonise most of them. You can't get to zero emissions without hydrogen. Hydrogen is a wonderful storage mechanism. You need them all. You need batteries, you need hydrogen, but hydrogen works very well on big storage and it operates in a similar manner to diesel or petrol. The difference between a hydrogen fuel cell bus and an, an, a, a battery EV bus is this tank stores hydrogen. The hydrogen is converted by a fuel cell underneath here into electricity. And that electricity runs and drives the motors on this bus. And it's not just buses making use of this technology. Ineos Automotive have announced they are developing a hydrogen fuel cell version of their new 4x4, the Grenadier. Hydrogen is absolutely the right application for a vehicle like the Grenadier. With a hydrogen fuel cell set up, uh, we'll be able to offer the same sort of a range as the internal combustion engine, while also being able to fill up as quickly, so no um, plugging in for long periods of time. Grenadier is a tool, it's um, there to do a job, so customers need to have that ability to get out there and do it and not be compromised in their application by having to park up and recharge. With this tool, we would like to create awareness for hydrogen, because hydrogen to the wider public is not very well known. And it is important that people know that hydrogen is a powerful gas with a lot of energy, but without CO2 molecules. So it can do the same as natural gas, it can do the same as fuel, but without emitting CO2 to the environment. And it's not just our roads, but the skies above that could be transformed. One of the first stops on the tour was a visit to hydrogen aircraft manufacturer, Zero Avia. Zero Avia started about uh, four years ago in California. We were the creator of the largest and the smartest platform for electrical vehicle charging. And uh, then uh, after we sold the company, it was, uh, there was a question about uh, what to do next. You know, it was quite natural progression to actually start uh, something in aviation. After we did all the calculations, it turned out that uh, hydrogen is, is the only scalable solution. We believe the combination of an electric powertrain plus hydrogen and fuel cells are the best solution for aviation. From an energy density point of view, compared to competing technologies like batteries, we believe hydrogen uh, has the advantage. We've got a fuel cell test lab on site that allows us to test the full power of the fuel cells and do a lot of developmental, experimental work prior to installation onto the aircraft and subsequent ground testing followed by flight testing. We believe in practical incremental approach. For the last two years, we've worked on the six-seat airframe. So we started with the battery electric configuration. Then uh, we have flown 100% uh, on hydrogen and uh, now we are moving to the 19-seat uh, uh, aircraft. Fuel cell testing is going very well. We've had the successful flight test in the Piper. We're really looking forward to testing the system in the Dornier in the coming months. So we are anticipating the introduction of this technology into commercial uh, space uh, in uh, 2024 when we finish uh, 
testing of this uh, engine and then certifying it. Uh, and uh, 2024, 2025, when you will see the first commercial uh, uh, flights uh, using hydrogen electric powertrain. It is important to create awareness about uh, among public uh, and all the other stakeholders that hydrogen is safe. Hydrogen can be used uh, in all types of transportation and all types of uh, application in a safe manner. Changing the way we get around is important, but construction also depends on large vehicles, so reducing their emissions is vital to building a better future. And who better to speak to than the company synonymous with building? So JCB has been working on its Road to Zero, its plan, or our Off Road to Zero as we call it, uh, for some time. We've been looking at all different solutions, we've got a number of solutions in the marketplace already today, um, but we're really excited about hydrogen. It's, it's the perfect solution for our industry, where we've got machines in isolated in remote locations, created infrastructure for the first time. Perfect, because it's a mobile fuel, we can deliver it to site, we can allow machines to keep working, take the hydrogen to site to fuel machines. I think without question, this, this technology is the most suitable for our industry. You know, customers say to us, create great new machines, but please make sure they're not too complicated or too expensive for the market they serve. But actually coming up with a hydrogen fuel motor, a hydrogen that's, that's taken and put through a, a combustion type engine is the perfect solution for our industry. We're really excited. There seems to be more and more large companies getting involved, fuel companies, gas companies deciding to move away from that and move into green hydrogen solutions. We've got great engineers making electrolyzers now, tying them to wind turbines, to solar panels. So there's a great opportunity to pull all the network together and really have a fantastic supply of hydrogen. But we need to give people confidence that the solution's correct, uh, come and experience it. The, the road show is just a fantastic, another fantastic way of endorsing the technology, but more importantly, making people aware that it's just a great solution to get to zero CO2 quickly. To make the hydrogen economy happen, further technology is required, but it also needs infrastructure and producers to make the gas. INEOS's Innovin site at Runcorn was one of the stops on the journey, where investment into hydrogen production is already underway. This is an exciting time for Runcorn site. As lots of industry has changed its uh, form over recent years, here we are producing hydrogen and can produce more hydrogen that can feed and support the UK in its drive for net zero. INEOS has announced €2 billion Euros across the world in developing hydrogen technology. Here in the UK, we're seeing tens of millions being invested on our site to um, enhance our, uh, our compression, our purification of that hydrogen to a standard that is suitable to feed into transport networks. The future of hydrogen is absolutely huge. Uh, the number of applications that are being developed uh, for hydrogen, with the environment in, in mind of course, are almost limitless. But they're absolutely massive in terms of volume. So really, the sort of industry we work in will be transformed as hydrogen be production becomes absolutely fundamental. Industry is ready and willing to invest in this infrastructure but it needs the right framework, the right business models to make it happen. But as a customer, you're not gonna buy a hydrogen fuel vehicle or a hydrogen boiler if, if the supply of energy isn't there. So to join the dots and, and bring the suppliers and the customers together, you need the right business framework and you need support from the government. After touring the country and visiting many different locations and businesses, the final destination was Jordan Hills School in Glasgow. Kids got to see close up what future journeys to school might look like. I think they've just been so excited from when they found out that they were going to get to go on the bus. They know that urgent action is required um, and they see it on the news all the time. So let's take a view to empower pupils um, and also to, to give them hope. Uh, so what they see often is the negative side of things, but they don't quite often see the solutions. Um, and that's why today's visit has been excellent. It's showing that solutions aren't just on the horizon, they're actually here right now. 
roadshow is there to inspire this next generation. Coming here is talking directly to the pupils about what we're planning to do, and it's not just about the bus. These guys have to understand that in rail, in shipping, and in aircraft, and in construction equipment, over the next 20 or 30 years, they will see hydrogen more and more as a power source for these vehicles, and it'll be fantastic for them when they come through their apprenticeships, through university. There is no doubt the hydrogen economy will touch these kids, and that's a very positive thing for the future.